Hi, I'm Erin. Today, I will show you a recipe that I have eaten my entire life, fried chicken. But it's not the traditional crispy, crunchy fried chicken that you usually think of. It's fall off the bone tender and delicious. See how it's done on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button because here on the ranch, there's always things to do. Mike has daily chores and the cows always need his attention. The next farmer's market is just a few weeks away and our crops need attended to as well. And the kids, well, when do they ever not need something? <laughs> but no matter how busy we are, we always need to eat. Everyone does, everywhere. It's something that we all have in common. This chicken recipe has been in my family for generations. My grandma made it often for her children, and maybe my great-grandmother even cooked it too. We don't really know where the recipe originated from, but I do know that I enjoyed this chicken often as a child, and as soon as Mike started coming to family dinners, he got to enjoy it as well. In our family, we simply call it fried chicken, but it's not southern fried crispy chicken. It's pan fried and then baked in the oven until it falls off the bone. The drippings are used to make a rich gravy, so mashed potatoes are of course necessary with this meal. A green salad or a steamed vegetable usually made its way to the table with this delicious chicken. First thing we need to do is get out a large skillet and add about an eighth of an inch or so of vegetable or canola oil. Turn the heat on to medium or just a little bit above medium. Also turn your oven on to 350 degrees. We have one whole chicken that's been cut up. This recipe works best with a bone-in cut of chicken. The chicken's been spread out onto a cookie sheet so that the salt and pepper can be sprinkled on. Then it's into a light flour dredge. Make sure to shake off all the excess flour. Then place the chicken skin side down into the hot oil. Keep adding chicken until the skillet is full, but not overcrowded. It's okay to leave a little space in between each piece. Now, it's important to leave the chicken alone while it gets nice and crispy and brown on the first side. It's gonna take about eight to 10 minutes. You want it nice and brown, but not burnt. Once it's ready to flip to the other side, leave it to cook for five to six minutes. At this point, the chicken is not cooked all the way, but it's time for it to come out of the pan. It's moved into a large roaster. We keep frying the chicken until all the pieces have made their way to the roaster. Next step is to drain some, but not all of the grease out of the skillet. Be careful, it's hot. Half of an onion that's been sliced is added to the skillet and cooked three to four minutes until it starts to soften. Water is added to the pan next. This is a large chicken, so a cup and a half of water is added to the skillet and the heat is turned on high. For a smaller chicken, only one cup of water is needed. We want to bring the water to a boil and scrape all the delicious brown bits off the bottom of the pan. The hot water then gets poured over the chicken in the roaster. The lid is put on and the chicken goes into a hot 350 degree oven for about an hour. After an hour, the chicken is cooked all the way through and it's practically falling off of the bones. It can be placed on a platter for serving and tent it with tin foil to keep it warm while we make the gravy. Two to three cups of water is added to the roasting pan and a little bit of kitchen bouquet is poured into the pan. Probably only about a half a teaspoon. You don't want the gravy to be too dark. About three fourths of a cup of flour has been added to a measuring cup and enough water to make it pourable. Salt can also be added to the flour thickener. Once the drippings and water come to a boil, pour the flour mixture into the pan while stirring continuously. Add as much flour mixture to reach your desired gravy thickness. If it gets too thick, add some more water to the pan. The gravy will thicken more as it comes to a boil and you wanna let it boil for two to three minutes to cook out all of the flour. Then it's time for salt and pepper and tasting the gravy. Keep adding salt and pepper until it's to your preferred taste. The gravy can take quite a bit of salt, so don't be too alarmed if you have to keep adding more. Once the gravy is cooked and thickened, you can strain it. A fine mesh sieve placed over a large bowl works great. Which piece do I want? I don't even need a knife to cut it, it's so tender. Okay. 
Hmm. Totally reminds me of my childhood. It's super tender, really delicious, and it's just gonna fall off the bone. This chicken is a great meal for family get-togethers or special occasions. It's really simple ingredients, it's inexpensive, and it tastes superb. This was one of my stepdad Gilbert's favorite meals. He used to have these huge birthday parties. There would be 80 to 100 people there most years. One year he asked my mom's fried chicken. One, I was in college at the time and I decided to come home and help my mom with the birthday party. We cooked for two days and the day of the party, we fried 17 chickens and drug it 30 miles into the country with a ton of other food. <laughs> it was really good times. Even when we're having fun on the ranch, there's always hard work and the reward is definitely worth the effort. Coming up on Sunday, Mike has another ranch episode where he will be sorting and starting to grain the steers. Tuesday, it's back to the project list, and next Thursday, we live stream and answer all of your questions. Make sure you subscribe for much more from the ranch and comment with your favorite way to have your chicken. As always, thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.